you tend to, to think about uh, constituents uh, in uh, obvious terms. You look and see what the skin color may be, you see what the gender may be, you see what their orientations may be, and we uh, tend to form opinions based upon that. The problem that is that we often really ignore or for some reason uh, fail to take into account what really makes us different. Uh, you uh, tend to look at those obvious things and uh, that can sometimes steer you uh, off into the wrong direction. Uh, I uh, remember uh, as a student uh, one of the, the fact, the only thing I remember from my uh, sociology course. There's <laughs> uh, one thing I remember. <laughs> and I really believe, that this is true, I, I really believe it may be the most important thing that I remember. I, uh, I can still remember the teacher, I remember the day that he emphasized this point. In fact, uh, I would be going uh, to uh, Durham and Winston-Salem, North Carolina, in, in a couple of weeks out there, a couple of years ago, uh, at, um, at, to attend the film. Dr. Bill Howell was his name. And he stood before the class one day, and, and, and his whole lecture was on one sentence. We are, but the sum total of our experiences. That was a whole lecture. I don't remember anything else that whole year. <laughs> we are with some sort of our experiences. Now, I want you to think about that a little bit. Now, a lot of times, uh, we have experiences that are dictated by gender. You, and you have experiences that are dictated by ethnicity. Some of them dictated uh, by uh, what skin color you may be. Those things will sometimes cause you to be treated a certain way and cause people to view you in a certain way. But I want to share with you uh, a little incident in order to make a point here today that I think uh, would be very, very I grew up in the town of Sumter, South Carolina, as you heard this morning. I grew up three blocks from my elementary school, six blocks from my middle school. I'm a graduate of Matthew Academy. We used to call it a boarding school in those days. I was about 20 steps from my dormitory, about 20 steps from my academic hall. I never rode a school bus. Never had any need to ride a school bus. Now, my wife, whom I've been married for soon be 47 years, grew up in the suburbs of Monk's Corner, South Carolina, a little place called Whitesville. She walked two and a half miles to school every morning, and two and a half miles back home in the afternoon. Soon, sometimes later, they got school buses. But she grew up experiencing school buses, passing them by every morning and then back home at every afternoon. And so right after the Swan v. Recklenburg decision, so, uh, that decision by the Supreme Court that said that it's all right to bust or uh, to achieve uh, education or, or integration. Now, when I heard that decision, we read about it. We were living in Charleston at the time, and, and, and I um, publicly 
express some disagreement with that decision. Because I thought that that was too great a burden to put on school children. Mm -hmm. And so that day when I uh, was out pontificating, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize it, but my uh, wife had watched the news that evening. And when I got home, she met me at the door. <laughs> the tears streaming down her face. I thought something had happened to our daughter. We had one child at the time. I rushed uh, to her to, to inquire as to whether or not something had happened to Mignon. She says, no, there's nothing wrong with Mignon. There's something wrong with you. <laughs>